when I was in uh, postgrad, doing postgraduate studies, one of my lecturers told me about seaweed and how it can be used as a means of uh, biofertilizer for agricultural purposes. Upon hearing that, he asked me if I'm interested in, in doing studies that are related to that. And so I looked up relevant literature and I found that seaweed has been used as a means of um, fertilizer around the world for a long time. It, and, but in outside of the region, there's not much happening with seaweed. Um, although we have access to a lot of seaweed, our coast, most of our coastal communities, they have access to a lot of seaweed, but they are not using that for agricultural purposes. And instead, they are, are buying chemical fertilizers to use on their crops. And Chemical fertilizers are quite expensive for most of our farmers in, in our region. And not only that, but uh, chemical fertilizers, they contribute a lot to the emission of greenhouse gases. And one way that, the, one way that people can help to reduce the emission of greenhouse gases is to change the way they do farming. And using seaweed biofertilizer is, a, is one means of changing how people are doing farming in our, in our region. If they can switch from chemical fertilizers to um, seaweed biofertilizer or any means of biofertilizer, it will help to at least reduce what we are emitting out into the um, atmosphere. Um, the method that I use is a community-based approach method. It's a simple method that anybody from the communities that have access to seaweeds can, um, can just go and get the seaweeds and, and, and replicate for themselves so they can use it. And on this chart here, these are the two seaweed species that I use, the Gracilaria edelis and um, Sagasama polycystin. And basically, um, these two seaweeds were collected from the sea and then I took them home, cut, cleaned them up, cut them, put them in a bucket with water and soak them for three months. And after three months I strained the liquid and this is what comes out after the um, three months period. This is the final product that um, I used on the crops. And then I did um, an agricultural trial um, experiment with some with two crops and the results as you can see down below here the results on the leaf count shows that the the, the gracilaria edelis um, and sagasum polycystin treatments the effect on the the thing was significant compared to control batch here and also on the yield because um, tomato we know they have fruits and on the yield this the yields were quite um, significant too compared to the control um the challenges that i see is it's it's not to do with the method it's just to do with if the seaweed is available in the communities, if people have access to, if whether they have access to the, the seaweeds or not. That's the first challenge that I see. And the second challenge is um, if um, people have access to seaweed, but nobody goes out to tell them what to do about the seaweed that is available in their um, location.